Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today I'm gonna try something absolutely insane. You see, I normally paint on my canvases like this because I like the layout, but what if I did this? <gasps> my god. He's on to something there. For you see, I was struck with inspiration. Here's the deal. A new Mac Miller single dropped a couple weeks back from Beyond the Great. And as I've said before on this channel, I am a huge fan. So I went to listen to this new track and I was very disappointed to find out that whoever put this together just re-released the song The Quest from watching movies with the sound off 10th anniversary edition but as a single this time. But it did get me thinking. One thing that I loved about Mac's work were the album covers. I mean, I even created a whole series of digital art based on the Faces album artwork. And I realized that no new official album art for Mac will be released least ever again, which bummed me out. But I realized that I just might have the skill set necessary to rectify this problem. So I decided that something new had to come from all of this and I set out to create my own two-sided LP jacket cover design inspired by the song named The Quest by hand on a canvas. I happened to have a canvas that was twice as wide as it was tall. Absolutely perfect for creating two square designs for a front and back cover. Well, that sucks. <laughs> well, I don't like to waste us. After drawing a line for the center of the canvas, I taped along one edge and covered half of the canvas. Then I grabbed a basically dead light pink spray can to paint the exposed half of the canvas. Come on, stay with me. Just a little bit more. Damn. Almost. Almost got the whole thing with that. Good thing I have a second one. <laughs> After removing the tape, I had one half of a symmetrically two-tone canvas. Now I needed to cover the pink half to bring in the second tone. A bright golden yellow. My idea from here is to use the right half, the pink half, as the front cover image and the yellow half as the back cover. Though, as you'll see later, there will be elements breaking those borders, making it a more cohesive and interesting design. But before you can see any of that, I need to sketch the dang thing. So let's do that, shall we? I'll turn to my trusty projector to transfer over my sketch as accurately as possible, as is tradition. But this one had to be lined up very carefully to make things even and correct. Not necessarily my strong suit personally, I'm more of a go for it and fix it in post kind of guy. But I managed to stabilize it and transfer over a very rough but still good enough sketch that I could work with. Now it's time to do a bit more taping, because another thing that's not my strong suit is is straight lines and I want this to be clean and print ready. After protecting my canvas from my mediocre brush skills, I can take some red paint and flat in the secondary background. Yes, there can be more than one background. Just wait and see, it'll make sense. Okay, thank God that's all the brush painting I gotta do for this one. So now I can move on to my Posca pads. Honestly, why anyone would use brushes when you could just paint with these is beyond me. Oh. <laughs> 
I'll go through and fill in all of the colors first, avoiding the areas that are going to be covered with black line work to keep the fills separated and give me a clear view of my sketch lines underneath. After finishing the color fills, I can bring a little contrast and depth into this bad boy right here. I'll start by adding a stippling shadow of darker maroon to the edge of the secondary background red to create a vignette effect, placing the red furthest back. Then I'll move on to the background elements, giving each a gradient, lightening the object towards the bottom and creating an atmospheric effect like you might see on a distant mountain range or foggy forest. This will help to bring depth to the entire image while keeping the lower contrast elements in the background and allowing the higher contrast subject to pop and remain in the foreground. With all of the background painting completed, it was time to remove all the tape and reveal a clean, pristine primary background with beautifully crisp edges that look oh so satisfying. However, when I removed the tape, I was mortified. The tape had pulled up some of the paint it was meant to protect and the paint it was meant to stop managed to leak through and mess up my clean edges. A true double failure. It was a sad sight and I wasn't sure how to move forward because I initially wanted the edges of the red squares to be the containers for these two different scenes. But part of being an artist is fixing mistakes you can't erase. Because sometimes while you may not be able to erase things, you can always add stuff. And if you're clever about it, you can make it look intentional. And when people ask you, why did you decide to do that? You can say something like, it represents the cage we all have to live in because society or some other stupid nonsense and they call you eccentric because you're an artist so yeah let's do that then The first problem I had to sort out was that the half line wasn't even between the red squares. So I decided to turn it into an orange spine using some more tape because that's definitely going to work this time. I don't know why I thought that would work this time, but I don't understand. I don't know what it is about the tape that isn't working because I've done this before and it's always worked for me, but I'll be able to fix that too. Just remember, be clever. So I covered up some of the leakage by having certain areas of stippling spill out onto the edges. Then I'll clean up those edge lines with the incredible power of more lines. Painting on a thick black outline to each side of the square, but leaving it open where the primary background spills through, as well as on either side of the spine. Then to cover up any damage spots or other problem areas, I painted on a simple graphic black ethereal fluffy cloud pattern on the primary background edges, solving all my problems while maintaining the theme. Now that's what I call clever. Then I can move on to inking in my line work. With the black line work attaching to the black outlines on the squares, it makes my improv solutions seem even more cohesive and intentional. This is really starting to bring the piece together and clean it up and honestly up until this point I had no idea if this piece was going to work. 
But before I can get too comfortable and pleased with myself, I had to take on the task I was dreading the most, the big area of text that I had been avoiding. Remember that whole not liking straight lines thing? Well, this is just make a bunch of straight and clean lines, and I wanted to do it without a ruler because I'm arrogant, and I ain't letting no text win. But I managed to get through it, and while they certainly aren't perfectly clean or anything, they are good enough for me. So after finishing up the background elements with these cherry blossoms, I felt confident enough to take on the subject. While thinking about what I wanted to create for a painting based on the name The Quest, I was imagining a great blue heron flying on a long journey from one land to another. I thought that image sounded like it would translate into my style perfectly and make a good blue meanie painting. I mean, blue is in the name of the bird after all. And with all the cherry blossoms in bloom in Seattle right now and the great blue heron being a PNW bird, I thought it would be perfect to have it flying from the PNW on the left over to Japan on the right, merging these two worlds with the cherry blossoms. And with a couple extra detail elements for flair, this painting is complete and ready for those final shots. Well, there you have it, my peoples. My album cover artwork, The Quest, is complete. And I'm really stoked with how this turned out. It's a little bit different in terms of the way that I'm shading stuff, just using the black stippling and then the highlight colors. But I think it works really well in this context, keeping that kind of graphic with the more traditional elements and merging them together quite well. But let me know what you guys think of the piece down in the comments below. And you know, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be fantastic. And if you like like me, you like the channel, and you want to help support me, the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did. It means the world to me. And with all that out of the way, and without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace! Thanks for watching.